Hi, Jed from Cook Culture. So today I'm going to be going over what a lot of people ask for specifically is how to clean and care for cast iron. So in the process of cast iron, you get it new. A lot of the times it comes pre-seasoned from the factory. A cast iron pan, fresh new from the factory, will be silver, but then it gets seasoned. So when you buy it in the store, it's black. It's a, or a very dark brown, but a black. Sometimes it's like a golden brown, but that's a pre-seasoned pan. Uh, and so a pan that is like this color, when it comes like that off the shelf in the store, has been seasoned. If it was like silver, it'd be raw. And not very often do you see that. Dubaye comes raw. So that's why it's silver when it's fresh and this is a very used pan and it's brown. Uh, so what we're gonna talk about today is the usability of the cookware. So seasoning is a process that's fairly simple to get a pan seasoned, but where things get tricky is when pans get used and things get stuck on them. So I've got a couple examples of that. There is a pan here that has been used and left with some crustiness on it. Uh, it's also semi shiny, but not really. And it needs to be taken down with a uh, scrubby. So this is a chain mail scrubby. And either you get a chain mail one that like, looks like this with some silicone in the middle or Field specifically makes a nice little square one. And what you do is you use this guy, stainless steel chain mail, to polish the surface and take any of the little pieces off of it. And so I also have a really awesome nasty one here that's got a bunch of onion fried right onto it. This may be what a pan looks like within your kitchen. This is totally normal. This happens, no problem. What I'm gonna do is show you how to start from finish and get this back up to a beautiful, shiny surface. Okay, so we're here to clean a pan that looks like that. So not overly cooked on, but you know, pretty charred on. It's not like this was set for an hour at high with food in it. Um, sometimes that actually almost becomes one with the pan, so don't do that. Uh, but this is like a regular, just overcooked stuff into a pan. So we're gonna get some warm running water. This does not need soap. Uh, there's a whole story behind soap and cast iron. You've probably heard that you don't use soap. Some people do. Uh, I don't. You don't need to. So you basically just take the uh, scrubby, your pan, get it wet. And with that, you just take a circular motion and it just takes everything off. So you don't have to go too intense. I find with some water, and a bit of time, it all just comes off. So it runs off, right? And that is pretty much it. So when you're doing this guy, you wanna have a feeling. And what I end up doing here is I put it into the sink and I lean on it. And I use my bo upper body weight. And I'm going around and around and around and around in circles. And then I'm feeling, and again, they, you know, you get a little bit of buildup in the corner sometimes with some oil. Um, that's not the end of the world, but there's just, you want to kind of get any chunkies off of there. It, it, it should be, it started super smooth, and there's really no reason for it not to be super smooth all the time. In the kitchen that we have here, lots of different types of people use the cookware, and it can get pretty heavily abused at home, if you're the only one using it, maybe someone else, two people, you should be able to baby this stuff and really, really easy maintenance, but it should stay amazingly smooth, right? So even that, there's, there's still a little bit of buildup, but I was able to get that pretty smooth and thin. Um, so that one is now gonna be ready to go over and to get some seasoning on it. This guy is one of my pride and joys in the kitchen, is the field. This is a lot smoother as you can see, but it's kind of dry and it's got a little bit of buildup. So just, just take the scrubby, I just lean into it, give it a polish all around. 
Like there's hardly anything in here. I can feel it going around, but it wasn't awesome. It needed a seasoning. And so just before I'm gonna season over top of anything that may have been cooked on before, I don't know who used this before. So I'm just gonna preventatively go around it and give it a polish. I'm gonna lean into it, but even with the, the smoothness of using the chain mail, which is amazing, it doesn't so much tear off the seasoning that's there. It will definitely work off any of the carbon that's there. And in some spots you can find you get really stuck on spots and you need to go really hard, you bend it and really lean in, that will strip off the seasoning. And that's where you really have to work harder to bring that seasoning back. But I have gone around that pan and it is feeling smooth all over. So the last one I'm gonna do here is this guy here. So this is a crepe pan, a Dubaier crepe pan, and it's got lots of texture. I can feel it. Now it's kind of got it wet so you may not see it as well, but there's tons of texture around here and it's just built on carbon. So I'm just gonna take my scrubby, work around in circles and just work, 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 work. So if you don't let this happen, you don't have to do this work. So what I'm saying by that is that if you don't burn anything on, it, it works quite well to just give it a wipe down and you, you keep going. If you really burn things on, if you also let things sit after you've been cooking, things really harden on. So you may get some, some build up, bit of carbon. You may have some things that are uh, building on, but if you take that right off the hob, off the stove top, and get that directly under some hot running water, people say you can't soak cast iron. If your cast iron is well seasoned, you can totally soak it. Just let it be for five, six, seven, ten minutes, whatever, while you're eating, and then go to it, and you'll find that everything will lift off really nice and easily, and super easy to maintain. That way you just basically give it a, a rub under running water, and it's ready to go. So this guy here, yeah, so you can see that quite a lot of that carbon has come off and there's still a little bit in the corner. Corners love to attract carbon, but a lot of that pan, but I've gone down through a lot of the seasoning. So this one is gonna take a little more work on building that seasoning back up. But basically, I'm putting my palm on here I'm happy with that now. I know that I'm going to have to re-season this one back up a few more layers. So I'm actually gonna really push on this one and take whatever off of there just so I can have a smoother finish. The reason for this, specifically on this pan, is that this is a crepe pan. And crepe pans, being that they're making crepes, you can also do this for eggs. An egg pan is really important to have it super smooth and have a fantastically well-built seasoning. So for those two things specifically that people are always wanting to know, how do I make great crepes? How do I make great eggs? A really, really well seasoned smooth pan is a trick to that. If you have built up texture on that pan, you do crepes, you do eggs, that will stick to the carbon. It'll stick to the buildup. So it's really important to keep your crepe pan and your egg pan really, really clean and amazingly well seasoned. I suggest, to have a separate pan. If you're an egg aficionado or you love to make crepes, have a separate pan. These things are not all that expensive. Buy a separate one, put it aside, don't let anybody touch it, use it just for that job. You never need to use nonstick for your eggs or your crepes. Just make sure the pan is in great shape. If the pan's in kind of poor shape, you won't have success. No matter kind of what amount of oil you use, that sort of thing, it'll just be difficult. So that's the trick to crepes and eggs is to make sure you maintain your pan really well, not just well, like I usually advocate, but really, really well. And you know, if you're particular about making those things, you're probably particular about looking after your cookware, so it shouldn't be too difficult for you. Okay, so those guys are now scrubbed down and wet, of course, but clean, and we're ready to go back over to the hob to get our seasoning on. Okay, so we've got all three of these pans that I just cleaned now on the hob here. I've got them all heating up, and we're gonna let them heat and let the moisture all evaporate and get really nice and, and dry. Get them reasonably hot. You don't have to have cookware stinking hot for seasoning. It's just a nice simple process where you are 
evaporating the moisture out of the oil and allowing the oil to bond to the surface. That's seasoning, that's as simple as it is. So we're gonna be using today, we've got the field seasoning oil. Uh, it's like a paste, it's actually suspended in beeswax. Uh, we also, really popular for us, uh, does very well, same, same, uh, buzzy wax. Um, so we've got buzzy wax, and we also have the field, field oil. The field oil, it comes in a larger container. Um, both have a little bit different ingredients and those are both on our website, so you can choose for yourself. Um, so what we're gonna do is let those guys warm up. They're on a, each one of them on a seven, and we'll give them two or three minutes to warm up. And then I use a cotton rag. The reason I use a cotton rag is that it gets uh, full of oil. If I do this with a uh, paper towel, any excess oil that I use here goes in the garbage and that's just kind of wasteful. Um, it's not like it's overly expensive, but it's kind of wasteful. I find that I season a lot and so why would I want to just chuck out 50% of my oil? So I use a cotton cloth and I store it all in a Ziploc bag, which just keeps it all quite clean. So um, we're starting to get some uh, dryness here. So the small little guy here is done first. So what I'm gonna do, this guy has some oil on it, or actually a lot of oil, but just a little bit onto there, just so you have a bit of a sheen, just a tiny little bit. I'm gonna take it, rub it around, nice and smooth, all around in that pan. It's always a good idea too, check your bottoms. On this guy, the bottom is totally fine. On the fields, once in a while, you can get a tiny bit rusty on the bottom. Um, you can always just hit it just a little bit with that. Keep the whole thing nice and seasoned. Um, on open flame, I'm on induction here as you can see. Open flame, that seasons incredibly well. You do need to clean your induction hob after if you've seasoned your bottom, but just a light, light, light coating. So uh, we've got the uh, nine inch guy done here. Just give him a nice little coating again. So really shiny, as you can see. So we're gonna just let him sit and start to smoke. That's what I'm looking for. It's just some smoke starting to come off the surface. As easy as that. This is the one that I really went to town on, as you remember. So quite a lot of exposed carbon here. So you can see maybe the smoke coming off there, if you can get that on camera. So just getting a nice light coating. This guy, I'm just gonna have on the hob for longer. So that's the only difference between them. When they already have a nice seasoning on them, you just need to give it a seasoning and you're off. Where if you've taken it down like that guy, and even, uh, even this guy here, that you can see there's a little bit of brownness happening around here. So what that is, is that there's a little bit of oxidation happening on this guy. So again, if I see any sort of oxidation, that means that I need to build up even further. I don't have a really solid seasoning on that pan and I probably went a little harder than need be with using the chain mail. It's really soft, but it really does its job. So if you push hard with it, you're going to rip that seasoning down, but building up your seasoning is not hard. So this is kind of the way in which it goes. It's not hard. So I'm seasoning three pans here at the same time. I'm just keeping an eye on them as they kind of go dull. So that was shiny. Now it's kind of going dull. I put a little bit more on. So it's gonna go a little shiny again. And it's just billowing just a little bit of smoke. If you're in a small apartment, not a bad idea. Get your windows open, open up, you get your hood fan on, but it shouldn't be filling your apartment. It shouldn't be filling your house. It should just be a tiny bit of smoke coming off of here. So I just keep rounding that on. So ideally, the very best thing to do is to put on the seasoning, let it fully cool and harden, and then do it again. So that is where actually the best seasoning is in use. So using the pan, not having the kind of buildup that we were dealing with on these pans, and just letting it build up and build up and build up. Quickly taking off the hob that you haven't burnt things on, get on some hot running water, let it steam clean a bit, wipe it out quick, just turn with your chainmail scrubby, just use it, just quick go around, and then put it on the hob to dry, dab a tiny bit of oil on it, wipe it around, let it come to a smoke, and then you're done. And you just keep building and building and building and building instead of taking down and taking down. If you do get to a point, like you remember seeing this one that was really quite harsh, that's just starting over and starting over and starting over and starting over. 
and it becomes frustrating because this guy here, to make a crepe from it, if it's not got great seasoning, it's hard to be as successful as you want to be. If it's really well seasoned, it's literally like nonstick. It's just absolutely amazing. So the goal is to keep layering, clean effectively, don't burn, don't use too high of a heat, you don't need to burn things on, you don't need to blacken things. You know, carbonizing things and creating the, the blackened in anything is kind of carcinogenic. So the goal is to really not be doing that and not to have things blackening and really sticking it hard onto the pan. However, that said, once in a while, I'll do something like candied nuts, like warming some nuts and a little bit of maple syrup. The stickiness that's left over can be pretty intense and sometimes it can brown around the corner of the pan and that can just stick on. So if you do something like that, again, quickly to the, to the running water after, when it's still warm, after you've taken the food out and let it soak and that's gonna go a long, long way. <coughs> Use your chainmail scrubby nice and quickly and then go through this whole process again, right? So here you can see, just starting to dull down a little bit. I've got lots of oil on this guy already. I'm just gonna go around the pan and just make it shiny. And that's all I need to do. So just layering up. So that's got each one of them. That one's got probably needs a little bit more. I'm gonna take the pan, the heat off of the two fry pans, the crepe pan. I'm gonna leave for a little bit and just kind of continue maintaining for a bit. But again, the best is just over multiple uses. So I will just make sure that this guy I baby going forward to make sure that each time that I grab this pan, it looks shiny and ready to go. So I hope that's helpful. And that's the simple way to scrub, maintain, and post-season your cookware.